Hi everyone. Good evening from Jerusalem. My name is Tel Yester. Um, I'm originally from Mexico City and have the schut to be living in Jerusalem for the last five years. I want to thank Eris for creating this amazing movement and for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So, siyata de Shemaya. I always thought that the Jewish calendar is the most incredible thing. Our calendar is a life. Our calendar is a spiritual roadmap that if we only pay attention to whatever season we're in, to whatever month of the year we're in, to what nature looks outside, I can know what I'm meant to be working on spiritually at each time. Not only that, but we can also, through the calendar, understand what energy is available for me to tap into my highest potential at each moment. Right now, we are standing in the coldest and darkest time of the year. It's the winter. And that's why I chose the theme of this class. Because the winter, for many of us, it's a very hard time of the year. The nights are very long. It's cold outside, at least in this side of the world. And Rav Kook tells us that our spiritual avoda in this time of the year is to go through this time that he compares to exile. He says that dark, the cold, the night equals exile. And just like in the winter, physically, we want to be inside, we want to go home and be cozy because it's too uncomfortable to be outside. He says so too spiritually. In the winter of our lives, when we're going through exile, when we're going through pain, collectively as Amisael or as individuals, our, our avoda, our work in this time is to go inside and to ask myself the question, who am I? Because if I don't know who I am in the exile of my life, in the hard times of my life, I'm going to lose myself. We're about to, to go into the holiday of Hanukkah, and Hanukkah was the last holiday that happened to Am Israel before we stepped into the exile that we're still presently in. And so exile, again, being pain, being darkness, being all these hard things that we go, go through in life. And then Hanukkah and the Voda, the work that we're meant to be doing right now, is very, very relevant. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about pain. And I went looking in the Torah. I wanted to know where is the first place in the Torah where we see pain. There is a, an idea that to understand the concept, the, ens, the essence of a concept, we should look in the Torah to see what is the first place where it appears. The first place that we see pain in the Torah is in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava. Hashem tells Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, that they can eat from all of the trees in the garden except for one. They shall not eat from the tree of knowledge. It's that. We know how the story goes. We know that this serpent conv convinces and seduces Eve to eat from the fruits of the tree of knowledge by saying, nothing's going to happen to you. You're not going to die by knowing. And in fact, when you eat from these fruits from the tree of knowledge, you're going to be like God. You're going to be like God because you're going to know everything. Then Hashem cursed Eve and women with pain. He says with pain and according to Rashi and the Sforno, some of the commentators, the greatest commentators in the Torah, the pain that Hashem cursed women with is pain in childbearing, pain in pregnancy, pain in labor, and pain in raising children. So again, Chava and Adam, Adam and Eve, eat from the 
fruits of the tree of knowledge. And as a result, Hashem curses women with pain. That's the first place where we see pain in the Torah. Pain in childbearing, pain in pregnancy, pain in labor, and pain in raising children. And I was wondering, okay, this is very interesting, but it's not only women who feel pain. Everyone feels pain. Men also feel pain. Children also feel pain. Women who are not in the face of motherhood also feel pain. So why is that? Because when we're talking about Am Israel as a nation, the Torah teaches us that we're always referred to as the women of Hashem. Collectively, we are all the wife of Hashem. Hashem is always going to be the male part. He's always going to be the giver. And Am Israel, we're always going to be the receiver. It's not a coincidence that the birth pains, the pains in, in, in birth are called Hevle Leda in Hebrew. And the pain of Mashiach, of this time where we're waiting in exile for salvation to come, it's the same word, Hevle Mashiach. It's not a coincidence. So all of the pain that exists in the world is a result from what Chava and Adam did in the Garden of Eden when they ate from the tree of knowledge. Now I want to make something very clear. The Torah, Judaism, doesn't believe in punishment. This is not a Jewish concept. We believe in healing. We believe in fixing. Whenever Hashem gives a, cor a curse, it's not to punish, it's never to punish, but it's always to fix our mistake. So pain is the healing, pain is the fixing of the sin of Chava when she ate from the tree of knowledge. My question is, why? Why, do, why does everyone have to go through pain? And how, by going through that pain, are we healing what Chava did when she ate from that tree? So, first of all, I want to speak about pain. And something that I've noticed a lot in my life is that real pain comes when we lack knowledge. Let me explain. Let's say a person is having a physical pain, like back pain. A person has back pain, and it hurts a lot, right? But it's not the pain so much what hurts, but it's rather the not knowing if I'm ever going to get better and when this pain is going to end. Always when we're going through some type of physical pain, we're sick. The most painful part of it is saying, I don't know when this is going to end. I don't know if I'll ever recover. I don't know how bad it, how much worse this is going to get. That is the most painful part. Now imagine a person is going through back pain and immediately they receive an, an SMS, a text message from Hashem saying, Telly, I'm talking to myself, Telly, your pain is going to be gone in one day and four hours. That's it, and you're gonna be perfectly fine. Would I suffer if I got that message? No, my suffering would end. Even if I still had the back pain, my suffering would end because I know in one, in one day and however many hours, this pain is gonna be gone. So now I just have to wait, but I'm not suffering. It's not painful, okay? Let me give another example. Let's say a girl, her boyfriend breaks up with her. This girl is very sad, and of course she's sad because the boyfriend broke up with her, but what is her pain? Her pain is not knowing if she's ever gonna find the one, if she's ever gonna get married. She doesn't know how much longer she'll have to look for this guy. Maybe she's never gonna find the one. That's what's causing her pain, not knowing 
when this is going to end. So here, so imagine this girl, again, the same example, the guy breaks up with her, and immediately she receives a text message saying, don't worry, in one year and three months, you're going to meet your soulmate, the perfect man for you, and you're going to get married, married to him. Then her pain would end. In fact, she would be happy that this guy broke up with her because now she can go and meet her real soulmate and now she just has to wait. So pain comes due to a lack of knowledge. When I don't know how and when and why, that's when it hurts. Where do we see this in the Torah? We have in Parashat Vayechi, the story of Jacob, Yaakov Avinu, our forefather, lying on his deathbed, deathbed, surrounded by all of his children. And he is about to reveal to them the end of days. How the end of days is going to take place? How is Mashiach going to come? When is Mashiach going to come? Who is this Mashiach that we're all waiting for? He's going to give a detailed explanation through prophecy to the tribes of Israel, explaining how salvation, how the Mashiach, and when, everything, everything about Mashiach. And how amazing would that be if we would just know? Right now, we don't know anything. We don't know when Mashiach is going to come. We don't know how Mashiach is going to come. We don't know who is Mashiach. We don't know. Maybe Mashiach is here. We don't know anything about Mashiach. And we have so much pain. Right? Because we're all, all the time thinking, how much longer? How many more pogroms? And how many more wars? And how many more deaths? And how many more sicknesses? And how many more divorces are going to happen until Mashiach comes? Is it going to be tomorrow? Is it going to be in another year? Is it going to be in another hundred years? Is it going to be? Am I going to be here? I'm going to be alive to witness it? Why don't we know? Because when Yaakov Avinu, when, when Jacob was about to reveal this to the tribes, to his children, Hashem took from him his divine inspiration, his prophecy, and he didn't, and he didn't, Tell, tell them. But he didn't tell us. Yaakov Avinu didn't tell the tribes because Hashem wanted them to get something that is greater than knowledge. Hashem wanted them to get faith. What we call in Hebrew, emunah. What is emunah? Emunah is deciding to put on a pair of invisible glasses through which we break all of those invisible walls of this world and we can see that Hashem is running the world. That everything has a reason. That everything in its source is good. Emunah, I heard from one of my teachers, is a yedi'a apucha mima she'enayim ra'ot. What is emunah? It's an opposite knowledge to what my eyes see. Listen how beautiful that is. Emuna is an opposite knowledge to what my eyes see. Emuna is real sight. Emuna is in a place of darkness where I don't see, where I don't understand. I decide to put on my pair of glasses and live in a way that I know with calm in my heart that Hashem is running the world. I decide to break through the walls of this world that I'm living in that show me divorce and terrorism and bad news and darkness and I see an infinite source of love that is the source of everything. And when Hashem takes out this prophecy from Yaakov and He doesn't tell the tribes how the end of days is going to be, when Mashiach is going to come, what happens? The tribes say, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. This is our mission statement. Listen, Israel, 
Hashem is one. That is the ultimate statement of faith. They declare their faith. And when every day when we say Shema, what do we do? We cover our eyes. Because faith can only be born in a place where we cannot see. In a place that is dark. The word choshech, which means dark in Hebrew, is the same Hebrew word, the same root as the word lishkoach, to forget. Because when it's dark in my life, when I'm going through pain, I can forget that Hashem is one. I can forget that Hashem is only good and Hashem loves me. And Hashem is running everything and everything has a reason. But Emunah can only be born in the, in the night. We say in Tehillim 92, Only in the night can I pronounce my faith. That's what Hashem wanted to give them when He took out the knowledge of Yaakov. Because Emunah, is, it's much greater than knowledge. And even though, yes, we have pain in not knowing when Mashiach is going to come, and it's so painful to go through this pain collectively and individually, only through this pain I can get Emunah. So I want to get back to our original question. Talking about the sin of Chava and Adam eating from the tree of knowledge. What, what is so bad about this sin? What is, what is the whole sin? What, what does it mean? When Hashem created the world, His purpose is that all of us who are going to be born are going to achieve emuna. That means coming into the world to declare and to live in a way that we know completely and we understand that Hashem is running the world. That is the purpose of creation. Hashem wanted Adam and Eve to get to that emuna without having to go through darkness. All they have to do is wait a bit and not eat from this tree of knowledge yet. Hold your desire to know and you will get emuna. And, and that's the purpose of creation. And afterwards, they could have eaten from the tree of knowledge. But that moment, that was the purpose. Chava gets seduced by the serpent and she says, I, 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 can't, I can't hold myself. I need to know. I need to know everything. And she goes and she eats from this tree. As a result, Hashem says, okay, so then there is no other way but to achieve emuna. To achieve emuna than to going through the darkness, to going through the pain. And therefore, when we all go through pain in our lives, and we achieve emuna, we achieve faith. What we are doing is we're healing Chava's desire to know. We live in a generation that has access to, to information like no other generation. I was noticing that the symbol in the one of the most famous um, technology companies in the world, which is Apple, what is their symbol, their logo? is a bitten apple. And now I don't know if Steve Jobs did this on purpose or if it's a joke, I don't know what it is, but that symbol represents chet, the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge. Right now I have information at my disposal like no one ever did before. I can know what's happening all over the world. I can know what all my friends are doing at any moment. I can know anything. This generation, with so much information, we're always trying to run away for, from pain. We're addicted to painkillers. We're addicted to anesthesia. We're distracted. We don't want to face the pain in our lives. We're scrolling our lives away and we forget to see. And Rav Kook tells us in this time of the year, what I'm meant to be doing is going in. And sometimes going in is going to be painful. Right? And sometimes going in means facing the dark stuff. But when I'm doing that, I'm healing everything. I'm, I'm fulfilling Hashem's
purpose for the world. And the Muna can only be achieved in pain. And that is the most wonderful gift anyone can receive. It's a Muna. And you can only receive it in pain. There's an amazing story that I always think about, and it's a story in the Holocaust, in a transport going to Treblinka. The, the, the journey is excruciating, long days and long nights on this transport. No light, screaming, death, bad smell. Everyone there is suffering. And there is a rabbi on this transport. His name is Rav Moshe Fastag. He belonged to a chassidut called Mojit. They were musicians. And throughout this journey, he's placed in a position where he's smashed against the walls of the train. And for days and days that they're going on the, on the transport, all that he's hearing being smashed against the wall is ch -ch, ch -ch, ch -ch. He's hearing the train tracks. And being a musician after so long, so long with this, 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 this sound, suddenly becomes a melody. And after a while, he starts to sing this melody in front of everyone in this transport, hundreds of people. And the melody, I'm not going to sing it, but the melody says, Ani ma'amin, ani ma'amin, ve'emunah shalema, ve'viyat ha-mashiach, ani ma'amin. So everyone in this train freezes. Wait a second. No, no, it can't be. Someone's singing right now? No, no, I'm dreaming. No one can be singing right now. And he continues, and he continues. And suddenly, people start to join, and they're singing with, with him. And you have hundreds of people singing in a transport going to Treblinka. Everyone's singing the same song. What does it mean? It means, I believe, I believe with full faith that Mashiach is going to come, that salvation is going to come. I believe. And they're singing that everyone together until the rabbi says, says stop, stop. Someone, someone has to jump out of this train and go teach the world the song. And whoever does it, I'll give you half of my portion of the world to come. Two boys jumped out of the train. One of them dies in the attempt. The other one goes and hi survives and hides in the forest for the rest of the Holocaust. He survives the Holocaust. He go goes to New York and he finds the Rebbe of Mojits and he teaches him the song. Now this song is maybe one of the most famous songs in the Jewish world. It's our anthem. And maybe there are much happier versions of that song today. But this song didn't, wasn't composed in a place of happiness. It was composed in the shadow of death. Of death. It was composed on a train that was taking everyone singing the song to their death and they knew they were going to die. That's what it means to have a muna, to know how to sing in the night when I cannot see, when I cannot understand. Every morning we wake up and the first blessings that we make, the first blessing that we make is called Anoten la sechbi bina lachbim ben yom umen laila. Hashem gives the rooster, the animal, the rooster, discernment to differ, differentiate between night and day. Why is that the first blessing that a Jewish person makes every single morning? Why are we talking about roosters the first thing in the morning? So, Everyone thinks that roosters start singing, start making that noise that they do in, at sunrise, but it's not true. Whoever has ever lived in a farm or something like that or, or knows these animals, roosters, roosters actually start singing way before sunrise. And that is because roosters, out of all the creatures that Hashem created, have the a vision that allows them to catch, to capture the first specks of light. So when the world is still dark for everyone, the rooster already caught the sunrise and started singing. 
Why is that the first blessing that we make every morning? Because we are the exact same way. When the world seems so dark and you turn on any news channel and you see what's going on outside, everyone can tell you it's, it's night, it's winter, it's dark, it's hard, it's painful. But the Jewish soul is already capturing the first speck of light. We already saw the sunrise. We awaken the dawn. We don't let the morning wake, wake us up. The word shachar, which means morning in Hebrew, is the same word as shachor, which means black. For the whole world, it's night, it's black, but we already brought in the sunrise. We already awakened the dawn. This is what it means to be a Jew. This is what it means to be a person with emuna, a bal emuna. And emuna can only be achieved by going through darkness. And these days that are so dark and they are so cold and it's so hard. And we're about to step into the holiday of Hanukkah. And the Greeks, this enemy of the story, the, the Greeks who wanted to, to, to hurt us, they wanted to destroy a part of us. They're all about philosophy. The Greeks, they are all about knowledge. They want to know, 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 know. And they tell us you can know, but don't feel, don't connect it to your heart. Let's stop wanting to know. Let's stop running away from pain. When we stop running away from pain, we can find the greatest gift. There is a poem by Robert Frost that I love that says the only way out is always through. And it, I think it's so true. You can escape, you can get distracted, you can use painkillers and epidurals in life, but you're missing out. You're missing out on the greatest gift that is emuna. That is knowing and having the inner peace at every moment in my life, no matter how hard it is outside. I know that Hashem is running the world. I know that Hashem is one. I know that Hashem is all good. I know that Hashem is all love. So is that Hashem connecting in this time of the year and, and this holiday, this amazing holiday of light in the dark? We should all have the merit and be able to connect to the light of the infinite. Thank you so much.